Hello family and welcome to our boring meditation stuff, this conversation about uh, meditation and how it affects uh, our crippling anxiety global pandemic situation we have going on. Um, this probably seems a little odd uh, to have a video entitled Elon Musk um, because what does he have to do with meditation um, and even what does he have to do with the coronavirus? Um, yeah, very little, as it turns out. Uh, but Elon Musk is sort of notorious for, or maybe infamous for, um, having this obsession with the simulation hypothesis. And I think that this is the sort of thing that when I was maybe in high school, um, maybe even younger than that, I would have really obsessed over um, if I'd given it much thought. And certainly uh, since computers have come to the point where we have uh, more and more processing power and more and more distributed computing, the simulation hypothesis becomes something that we start to think about a little more all the time. And uh, the simulation hypothesis can be stated very simply in, uh, in terms of a question, which is, how do you know that this is not a simulation? How do you know that the world is real and not fake? And um, this idea has has bounced around a few places, um, probably most notably The Matrix, but I'll talk about that specifically tomorrow. Um, more recently, it came up in a TV show called um, Upload, where people die and their consciousness is uploaded to a computer system. And it is, it is this, I think, that is probably the... Um, the modern version of what the matrix was back in 1999. And it is actually surprisingly difficult to talk about the problems with this uh, hypothetical situation and the um, simulation hypothesis itself. But what it breaks down to is the fundamental truth surrounding what your consciousness actually is. And um, there's a certain recursion here, right? No one can tell you, I can't tell you, and I certainly can't tell you through a video what your consciousness is. Because as you watch me on a video, you're seeing light which is coming from your computer screen or your phone and it's hitting your eye, and then it's being processed by the optic nerve, and um, it is going through all sorts of different filters, essentially, on the way into um, processing and storage. And you don't really know that any of that is real. You don't know that the way that you interpret information is real. Um, you don't know that physics is real you don't know that your thoughts are real. Um, so we always end up with this uh, sort of memory implantation scenario, right, as a hypothetical, where, okay, if your consciousness could be uploaded to a computer, then someone could inject memories into your past stream of consciousness that you can look back on, and now you have false memories. And then what is the, the total of your memories at all, right? Um, it, it's nothing. It could all be completely fabricated. So right up until this moment, it's, it's completely fabricated. It's completely fake. Um, and it's a, fun, uh, it's a fun intellectual game to play. Um, but unfortunately, by way of intellectualization, there's no way out. There is no way for you to think about this problem and solve it. 
there's certainly no way to discuss the problem and solve it because um, you can always kind of go back to this base assumption, right? You can always start with the assumption that everything is a simulation. Everything is fake. Or, I mean, if you don't want to bother with a computer version, you can say, I am God, right? But like, start with the assumption, I am God. I created all of this. Um, and now this is just all byproducts of my imagination. And this is a sort of dream state that I'm stumbling through. Um, either way, whether it's a simulation or you are God and you created everything, um, whatever the, the starting hypothesis is, what you'll find is that um, you don't know whether that thing is true or untrue, and so you can take it for granted. And if you do take it for granted, um, it is absolutely the case that you can't trust anything, right? Um, and even um, if we dial it back to our sort of our common understanding of the universe, we do know that we, we can't trust the eye, we can't trust the light, we can't trust that we are seeing true things, because certainly we are not. Um, we can't trust that we're hearing true things. We, we see and hear in such a narrow band of the spectrum of data that's out there. Um, first of all, we're listening, seeing this tiny spectrum of data, and then we're misinterpreting the whole thing. Um, and I, I think that it's uh, common for Oliver Sacks and um, the uh, V.S. Ramachandran, um, for the lot of them to sort of agree that like, kind of you're hallucinating the experience that you have. The, your true experience is really just a, a neatly compiled hallucination of an interpretation of the world around you. And that's kind of our current scientific understanding. Um, so if that's the case, if you can't trust anything outside, whether you're starting from the, the pessimistic view that everything is a simulation, everything is fake, or everything is created by me, whatever the case, or if you just start with our kind of baseline in the year 2020 scientific view that more or less we're misinterpreting uh, an extremely limited set of data that we perceive based on these really terrible devices that we have, right? Like we have this kind of crappy gummy cameras and then these bad microphones and uh, some sort of like smell detector sensor in the front here. Um, these, these can't tell us a great deal about the universe. Uh, we can try, we can really fight through them to try to learn about the universe. Um, but the way in which we fight can also be wrong. And so then, then where, then where do we go? Um, the only place to go from there is inside. Um, and so you have to say, oh, okay, if all of these things are sort of, they're understood in meditation circles, right, to be doors, sense doors to the outside world, we have to go into the inside world. So we have to experience the inside of, of whatever is going on here um, to see, like, where's the base? Where's the foundation? Um, if this is a simulation, let me, uh, you know, let me turn it off. Let me find the, uh, the kernel, <laughs> right, of the simulation. Where, where's the root? How do I get back to the, the base, basic material that all of this is comprised of? And the way to do that is through the body, actually. So we only have so many ways of experiencing the universe. Um, we have, you know, five or maybe half a dozen external ways. And then we have this one internal way, which is physical sensation in the body. Um, and it is interesting. I mean, it's, I, I will say it, right? It's interesting that you can, and at some point will, know the answer to the simulation hypothesis. Um, you will know, you can say definitively, like, oh, this is true, um, this particular thing, not the simulation hypothesis, but that you will have an answer to that question. Is this all a simulation? 
is this all made up? How does the universe work according to my consciousness? Um, to understand what consciousness is, and then you have an answer. But um, unfortunately, to hear that from me is valueless, right, in, in this framework, because um, you can't read a book that will tell you the answer to the simulation hypothesis. You can't watch a YouTube video which will tell you the answer to the simulation hypothesis because these things are all outside. You're watching me with your eyes, you're listening to me with your ears, and uh, you're stuck in this kind of you know, uh, recursive exploration of the outside world, constantly exploring the outside world. And this exploration of the inside world um, for you can only be done by you. So you're also a bit stuck in that you have to sort of stumble through these first steps of that. Um, so Anapana meditation is the, it's sort of the, the first of the first steps, right? Um, if, if it's a journey of a thousand miles, let's say a thousand kilometers, um, Anavana meditation is uh, deciding to take that first step or maybe like the, the intention, right? Um, and then the very first step will, would probably be uh, some secluded meditation, uh, Vipassana course or something like that. Um, and specifically meditation on the body. Um, and where a lot of time is dedicated to meditation on the body, exploration of the body, um, awareness of the body, and the changes which are occur constantly occurring within the body, and exactly how are they occurring, and what does that mean, and where is consciousness. And what you will find for sure, um, again, I can tell you, you have to, <laughs> you sort of have to take my word for it until you experience it yourself. Um, we will never, ever come to a point where we can upload a consciousness to a computer. Um, this is not possible. Uh, this is the, the fundamental nature of consciousness is complex enough that that is a physical impossibility. Um, I realize me saying that isn't very valuable. You'll, you'll have to go see it for yourself um, and see it inside. I suppose, but that, that is certainly the truth. And so this sort of modern idea, um, like there is in this TV show, Upload, where at death, oh, okay, I'll, I'll upload my, my consciousness to the fanciest resort um, of you know, fake heaven. Um, that will never happen, that will never exist. And so maybe that's reassuring to you, I don't know. <laughs> Um, if you want to be completely reassured by way of self-experience, then you can start meditating and experience it for yourself. But um, I thought that this would be a fun sort of out-of-band talk, um, not about Elon Musk, but about one of his obsessions. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, I will talk about um, The Matrix and it's a, why it's a slightly different circumstance. Um, that you're in in the matrix and what exactly uh, that means. Okay, I hope everyone is taking care of themselves. I hope that you all are having or had a good weekend and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Goodbye.